the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Oh, man, I remember that one blasting at parties. I, the 90s, I just, I was thinking of that song and I had to look it up. When did that come out? Joe, does the 90s sound right? I do believe. Was it Space like 94, 95? I'm gonna I'm tell guessing. you right now. I'm really was it guessing. on like a big shiny tunes or no? One no, of those kind just of their own album, no. but it just was one of those. It was a huge song. 98, 1998. 98. It was a uh, yeah. It just it, as you can as you can imagine, it just shook the walls of any party you were at. Yeah, because I mean, just the lyrics alone, right? Every you don't even have to sing; you just yell it. Yeah, like it was that. That's <laughs> Phil, that is Phil's jam. Yes. Who's in the rec room? I can hear Aubrey <laughs> down there. So why is everybody up in the kitchen? That's where the keg is. Who wants a chest bump? Free chest bump. <laughs> Aubrey's downstairs rocking out the space. Lord. There's always the one guy in the group though that was about six four and would hit the the, the suspended ceiling oh, in yeah. the basement because it was a little low in one area controlling the stereo at a house party was big if you could get your paws in there and start working i don't know if that was something you guys ever tried to do but i if i knew the person a little bit too i'd always find my way to the stereo and try to get some i had a music company proper when i was going to university right you even had your like that would be the best you know i I, I had to get a friend of mine who just had a book of cds and a six, yep. six disc changer in the basement to pretty much handle the music. But he's doing weddings, right? Like you're well, doing I weddings did all and that socials. stuff, socials and university parties. But if you had a house party, you know, who do you think they're calling to say, hey, if you're not doing anything this Friday night, you want to bring your equipment in? So you're bringing these Sirwin Vega speakers in, like yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> like these things become end tables in the in the living room. People got their drinks on them, and you're freaking because you're going, you can't yeah. spill this stuff. Yeah. That's nice gear. You and don't want to just play, and then of course somebody would come in with their own like CD, burnt CD, saying, "Hey, can you play this mm-hmm. track?" Oh, I'm always. not getting paid. We're just playing music tonight. Like <laughs> always, put this on, man. It's yeah. a great mix of tunes. <laughs> Joe the DJ, did you? Did, was that fun? That had to be fun. Oh yeah, it was yeah. Lovely. Seems like a fun gig. Sure. Except Buddy and I were... did it to meet girls originally. Yeah, it wasn't okay. a money-making venture. It was a good way that to meet people. DJ, man. DJs were hot uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We got hot <laughs> stuff. <laughs> sure. Hey, hey. Look what it did for Kirby's buddy who had the six CDs and the stagger. He got the same rep. Uh, you know what? Right? The dude's a fashion designer now yeah. in Toronto. Oh, you see? Oh, completely like wild. out of That's what got him started. Field. Drayton well. Valley. Everybody knew. <laughs> Everybody knew he was the only Shocking, kid that didn't honestly. wear plaid. <laughs> <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Call the Bone Phone seven eight zero Bone. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. Yeah, usually I'm bitching about uh, traffic and people like not being able to read road signs and stuff, but you know today I. I driving down Portage uh, near Moray, and I see this uh, uh, parents staring at their phone on the sidewalk with their child, and they're literally like, clearly they're waiting to jaywalk across eight lanes of Portage Avenue during rush hour. And it's like, I, I don't understand why you people don't want to go an extra hundred feet to an actual f-ing crosswalk where you can get across with a vastly reduced chance of being hurt. And instead, you're just like, all right, kids, hey, gather around. This is how we wind up at the hospital for six months. Yeah, you remember that game Frogger? We get to play it in real life. Like, what the f*** is wrong with you people? Frogger was a was one of those OG games, man, back in the day. But yes, there's no excuse not to use a crosswalk. They are ev- they're literally everywhere. Like, you know what I mean? There's crosswalks with the lights all over the place in Winnipeg. There is nothing more terrifying than like driving and having somebody on like a like one of those mer- meridians, I yeah. guess. Meridian. Yeah. Yeah. And medians. Like the, yeah. Medians. Medians. Yeah. yeah. And they'll start walking and they think they like, they're trying to time out their walk with your vehicle going by. Yeah. Mm. And man, oh man, sometimes Dangerous. they get so close. That is kind of lazy though. If you're that close a hundred feet and he's right, like you're playing against the odds. So and you got, uh, you got kids with you. Wow. Be careful. Hey, I just got a little quick question, just picking up some pizza from Santa Lucia's, and I noticed uh, some motorcycles on the road, and why the beep, there you go, Philly, (laughs) saving you some time. Thanks. Why the beep does every goddamn motorcycle in the city have to go get ahead of me and go to the nearest Tim's? What is the attraction for motorcycle guys and Tim Hortons? 
Come on, y'all. I think, you know, I, I don't know, but I assume they get a coffee, hang out in the parking lot, talk about their bikes, talk about... Because they're going on extended rides, right? They're going cruising on their bikes. So they're stopping for coffee? Is that the way you... Uh, Joe, is that the way you would understand yeah, I, that? I would I would uh, guess. I would guess that. It seems to be a meeting place. Yeah, mm. for a right? lot of people. I did like how he picked up a pizza, though. Mm. You know, so got to do that, it. and then you do a little <laughs> observing on your way out of there. And didn't make me put beefs in there. Thank you very much. I knew this was coming. So lots of complaints lately about the construction, particularly yesterday on the perimeter. And here is a response, I assume, from someone in the construction industry. Oh, there's construction everywhere. There's construction on the north perimeter. Get more people. Just shut the f*** up, you guys. They're trying to fix the roads. You don't understand construction, so don't act like, you know, you know your work. Do your job. Don't worry about everybody else's. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. Fair enough. Well, kind of how I operate. I just I don't worry about other people's jobs. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know how to do anything other than what I do for a living. So why yeah. would I criticize well, somebody else's job? Well, I don't think the calls in in defense of the callers mad about construction. They're not criticizing the the construction workers. They're wondering, like, a lot of the calls lately are like, why are we repairing this? It was just repaired a couple of years ago. So they're wondering what the work is. And I don't think there's anything wrong with transparency saying, oh, well, they're building a new this or they're extending this or, you know, something like that. Well, Curbs and I were talking uh, before we went on the air this morning about the the roads buckling because of this heat wave in a couple of spots and they've been fixed. Like, the work never ends. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just some. And those were surprise projects that came up, right? Always something. Okay, this uh, this dude uh, called in yesterday. He requests hot, hot, hotter than hell by Kiss. Yes, he did. And he's got more. He's on it, man. He's got more hot weather songs. Hey, guys, I've got a couple of other hot songs here. You might want to play uh, during these hot days. So we got Heaven's on Fire, mm, again, by Kiss, and uh, Burn in Hell by Twisted Sister. Uh, anyways, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Both good songs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Both good hot weather songs. Absolutely. I'll add it to my hot list or my hot weather playlist. Put it on there. Nice. Yeah. I got one going on for the weekend. You got plans this weekend. <laughs> Just Kirby on her balcony listening to hot weather music. <laughs> hot now, summer in the city. <laughs> what has she got going on? That's her heat warning hot list playlist. Oh, I love it. Okay, you have one of those window air conditioners or those those smaller air conditioning apartment units, right, Kirby? I got a couple of them, yeah. This guy wants to know where he can get one repaired. I just want to find a place in the city that repairs window AC units. But apparently a half a dozen places all say no. I would rather spend 100 to $200 to get my machine fixed so it'll last me another five years instead of paying $600 to get a working one right now. Who do I have to kill to find a place? Dude, I feel for you. I actually had to, this year, on one of my units, the one in the bedroom, had to order parts from the company that I had the, like, that is the unit from. Yeah. And then I fixed it. And it's so it wasn't, thanks to a YouTube video. So your landlord doesn't have to fix it. This is your no, own. No, I pro- bought that from Costco. I got you. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. The okay. landlord's sitting there right now going, oh, but really? You called me about your toilet? <laughs> well, that, that's included in the unit. That's true. That's true. We'll wrap up with Lisa here in Folk Fest. And th- th- she is, she's on top of what's happening. Say what you want about Lisa. She's on top of what's happening in the city and in the province. She's always very timely. Hey, I'll tell you guys a story. No one listens to me. But it's the Folk Fest. 74,000 people at Birds Hill. Like camping there. That's all my friends on stage. I used to be the tambourine. Yeah. I'd rather stay at home and take a cold shower. <laughs> I go, well, how long does it take to go there? Traffic jam. Like running out of gas. And I picture it, eh? Like they're all camping. I would bring a thing of water, but whatever. I bring water. But whatever, enjoy yourself. T- tambourine player in a band, I'll Lisa? Tell you, that's underrated, isn't it? I just can't keep up with the list of things that she gives us. Hey, let me ask you this. You drove to Birds Hill on Wednesday when the lineup was starting to go, and the and, and weather was, was obviously there. good. Yeah. So Lisa's gone to something, but I'll tell you, Linda McCartney played the triangle and the tambourine <laughs> with the wings and Paul McCartney. Look what it did for her career. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Lisa, former tambourine player. Okay, so she came from the Kodak family, and there she was a multi 
millionaire before she ever played the tambourine. Maybe Lisa's story is a little <laughs> different. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Jojo, I know we've talked about this in the past, but uh, you also consider yourself a fast eater, do you not? Yeah. 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 I don't waste much time mm. when it comes to food. Because I'm a notorious... I'm all in. I'm, I'm a notorious fast eater. Yeah, I, it, you inhale. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm well aware of it being something I should probably correct as I go forward. To the point where when we were on holidays there, I was eating with my family and I posted something on Instagram because I finished my meal and then I looked around and literally, my kids are pretty quick too, especially my youngest, but they were, they had barely touched what they were eating <laughs> and I was done. And it's like, what do you do at that point? You, you know, so not only is it not good for me, it can lead to indigestion, right? Like you read all these studies about eating too fast it's not good for you plus you eat too much because did you go get seconds no you know what i do my wife always gets like three quarters of the way through her meal and she doesn't want the rest oh so i sit there and stare at her and see when i can start plucking at her plate wow. and then I you start... are like an animal i am yes. like i just <laughs> like you you wait to see when the other person you're like my cats yeah my one cat literally <laughs> watches the other one to make sure that when it's done out of that dish that it's going to go in and finish whatever's in the dish. And does it usually get leftovers sitting in that dish? Well, if, if, if it doesn't, it barges its way in there. And gets some more. If the other one's taking yeah. too long With to eat. With cats, there's always one that's uh, more dominant yeah, for sure. It's, it's bizarre. But in this family, he's, uh, the, he's, the, he's the dad. <laughs> so here's the great example. He's hovered in a corner like a wolverine, like hanging over the, the food. And then, and then the rest of the family sitting at a table, right? Like, uh, oh yeah, I'm he's waiting. done eating, and all of a sudden he's twiddling his thumbs. The kids are thumbing around through their food. Yeah, it depends on what the food is, though. Sure. I find, if it's something that Christy has made, let's say, and I'm not really the biggest fan of it, like I'm taking my time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wow. well, what? Wow, she I'm knows. just being honest. Can she just, knows. She knows, and you're like pushing it around the plate. <laughs> well, she knows too. Oh my god! Like, well, she knows I'm a picky eater. Uh. So come on, let's be honest. I'm sitting there. If she's if we're making burgers on the barbecue, I'm all in. You mm. don't have to tell me twice. But if she's, I don't know, ribs or something, pork chops. Pork chops are a great example. And I'm sitting there going like, oh, okay. Like, Not your thing. Yeah. Never see me eat so little. You know, <laughs> like, oh, only one pork chop, huh? <laughs> and the smallest one on the How tray, let's say. How passive aggressive of you. No, not passive aggressive <laughs> at all. Just being, trying to be nice enough not to say anything and just yeah. eat. Cooking for someone who is, is choosy. Uh, like you, I that must be high stress. For yes, me. like I, I yes. would not want to do that <laughs> at all. Like no, and yeah. pork chops, man. Oh, that's an old Phil Aubrey classic. When I was a bachelor, that was my specialty. Pork chops, put some seasoning salt on there. Put them in the oven on broil. Yeah, oh, shake so and bake. Good. Yeah, the shake. <laughs> man, I have resentment towards my ex husband because now all these years later he has decided to go plant based. But when we were married, all those years. All he ate was meat. Mm. I would literally make two different meals, like one for me that didn't have meat, and then one for him. And now he's living his best plant-based life, and what, I'm just like, what, what is what going the on hell? with you and your ex-husband? <laughs> he came to visit you, right? He came to visit you. You guys rebonded. Now you find out he's got more in common with you now than when you were married. And you just saw him on all this. I got to know, what's going on? Oh, is something going on here? Absolutely not. In fact, like, honestly, I'm kind of annoyed with people that insinuate that because it's just like, why can't somebody be friends with their ex-husband? Hey, fair I enough. Guess, yeah. Fair enough. Joe and I just yeah. wanted to know if we should In get In fact, we know. make best friends because I think that we You guys have... are best friends now? Well, I think so. Well, wait a Whoa. second. He's not in the top three buddies, is he? Is he getting is a, he a t-shirt? Did he, he jump past Joe? He, he, he doesn't did. get a t-shirt, okay? He went plant-based. He's just no, I resent him me. for being plaid based because I'm like, all those years I cooked for you. you know I'm what? number ten, buddy. Now and you're number three. I'm the no, you went up the other day. <laughs> yeah, you're up. Don't get the, don't get me Stop started. Stop trying to go down. <laughs> Your ex husband <laughs> has gone full circle and now gets a t shirt. Now he gets a shirt. Oh, Best man. buddies. Oh, wow. <laughs> Someone says on the text line, I need to give my family a head start for eating. Like, okay. Oh, I love that idea. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Well, on 
the level of famous people we've had in studio, and I'm not just trying to pump your tires or make you blush, Jason Muse, but you're right up there. Like, like, would you, Joe Kirby, would you say top five? Like, this is a pretty big moment for us. You're at Rumors this week. Thank you so much for making some time for us this morning. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate dude. it. Yeah, Grew it's... up watching you in, like, mm. many different movies. TV shows. TV shows, appearances in TV shows and movies. Yeah, I've, and I've been here. It's 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 cool to think, like, I have been here like a bunch of times now because it's my third time uh, performing at Rumors. And then I had been here, uh, you know, I was coming here every, I can't remember how, how frequent it was filming, but, you know, we filmed here at Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. So mm. um, Winnipeg, you know, is like right up there. I mean, I've been here uh, at least 10 times. So that's wild. I man. love me yeah. some Winnipeg. It's funny because every time I come back, I'm like, oh, I remember this. I remember that mall. I remember <laughs> here, you know. So. <laughs> Nice. Anyway, it's it's been nice. It's nice. And uh, yeah, tonight, rumors. Uh, tomorrow night, rumors. Come by. Mm -hmm. You guys are invited. I always invite everyone that, I, you know, so of course, please come. I don't know. Well, there's not many there, tickets so. left when Jason Muse comes to yeah. town, to be oh, honest. You can well, be thanks. humble, but there's not many tickets left. You can't invite as many people as you think you can well, invite. <laughs> well, inviting you guys, well, even if there's like, even if the seats are full and you guys come, I'll be like, wait, wait, they got priority, right? We get standing room yes. at the back. Yeah, I know. Make us feel important, please. Well, thanks. You've obviously done a lot of different things in your career, and I noticed I love I love people that do voiceover work because I, I I couldn't tell you how that would be different than acting in front of a camera, but because you have to get into that character. But do you love doing the voiceover stuff more than the acting, or vice versa? Ooh, I don't know if I like it. I don't want to don't want to say I like it more. I mean, I do enjoy it. I mean, there's benefits to both. I think it's nice to do voice work and you, you can just go in looking as messy as you want and and just and you sit in one room and, and go over and you can re keep repeating it right. and go over it until you feel like you like what you got. Where, you know, when you're on set, there's time limit and stuff, so you can't just sit there all day. But um, but I, I move a lot, too, though. I feel like it's hard. It's almost hard for me to do the voice work okay. at times because if it's certain things, I want to move my hands and move yeah. my bodies. And then they're like, you you know, the, the mic's picking everything up. So then I have to redo it or something. So right. but again, it's not that I can't do it. I'm just saying that there's pros and cons, I feel like, to doing both. Like, right. you know, there's fun doing characters and, and being on a movie set and doing uh, you know, getting to run around and, and move your body and stuff. And then when you're doing voiceover, you have to sit in a box and yeah. try not to move yeah. too much. A little harder so, than it looks. It, 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 is. Like, it yeah. really is. Yeah. It really is. So, uh, something cool that I thought you did was uh, team up with Jack Osborne for nice. uh, his project, <laughs> Looking for Bigfoot, which was kind of a cool thing for you to do. It was. You know, we got to do three of those, and, and all three of them were just as fun as the other. Like Bigfoot, him and I did the hunt for Bigfoot. Then we uh, then we went to Skinwalker Ranch, him and Jamie Kennedy, and then we went to Ashmore Estates. And I'm hoping we'll do more, you know, right before we finished Ashmore Estates, which was the last one uh, that came out on Discovery. Um, you know, Jack's team pitched an idea to the network about doing like, hey, we want them to go to like different places that movies and books are based on and see if Ooh. we can find some haunted situations. Like, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. The idea he had written up was great. So we're still waiting to hear. But then like the strike happened and all this. And it was right before the strike happened. I mean, the strike's been over now for months, but. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping they f eventually get back saying, hey, we're going to do this. Let's go. Because it is. It's a blast. Like going into a house and just yeah. sitting there and waiting to hear stuff. And then you're like, I think I heard something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Was an, it was I the commentary for yeah, me. Yeah, it's, really, it's really, it's fun. So In nice. studio with Jason Muse this morning. Can we talk about your tattoos? Because you, you have many. And I know oh. there's some good stories with them. Kirby just fresh off a brand new tattoo over there. Yeah, okay. started my leg piece here. You got a favorite on you, Jason? You got some that mean more than others? I, You know, I don't have a favorite. I don't, you know, some of them I think meant stuff when I got them. And now, years later, I, I they still have the same meaning, but I, I you know, I could probably do it out some. Um, but I have a good story. I, I do have a good story with this one. I feel like here, I, I like to tell this shoulder? one. Shoulder? Is that a sleeve? Or if you could look really close, it's I guess it'd be a shoulder. Yeah, it's yeah. over my shoulder for yeah. people who can't see. 
And right here, if you look really close, there's a B. Mm. All right, it's the Boston Red Sox B. Oh. Hey, that's my team. Joe's a Red Sox fan. Well, I'm a we Yankees suff- fan. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not really a baseball fan, but if growing up in New Jersey, if I was a fan, when I pick people say, "Hey, pick a team," I say Yankees, Giants, Devils, right? Yeah, right, right. Um, but I, I don't. I'm not a big sports guy, honestly. But Affleck, Ben Affleck, and I made a bet. I said, hey, Yankees are going to beat Boston this week. They had like the seven-game series That or was the you. big comeback. Man, yeah, and they winded up losing. He said, if you lose, you got to get a Red Sox logo, the B oh. on your a tattoo somewhere. And you covered it up. So I lost. And he said, after a couple of years, you don't have to keep it. So like two years later, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I still have the – I went through with the tattoo. Yeah. Here's the Boston thing. And he, I said, it's been like two years. Can I cover it up or are you going to be mad? <laughs> he goes, no. He's like, you've had it for two years. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so I covered it up. But here's the, the great thing of the story is if I won – he was going to give me, he had like three motorcycles at this point. Oh, wow. He had a GSXR 1000. He had like a Harley, like big boy, whatever you call him. And he's, and I was like, will you give me, the, if I win, I get that Jixer, the, yeah. call him, the GSXR, whatever you call him. Um, and be, even though I lost, he, and I got to be, because I went through with it and he didn't think I would, that Christmas he gave me the motorcycle. Oh, what a wow. guy. Yeah, right? What a well, stand-up dude. The artwork now looks like it's like a di- The arms are still good. The Thanks, dinosaur, that's... it looks like a reptile kind of indigenous uh, artwork, yeah. right? Yeah, so it looks I, had, cool. I had gotten this one. I, I did a movie um, with Danny Trejo. And, oh, and, and we love Danny. And, and, and they put fake, ta- a fake tattoo on this arm. The the guys because we were in prison in the in the mo- in the movie, um, and I was like, man, I really like this tattoo. I'm gonna get a real one like this at one point. And the guy was like, I'm a real tattoo artist. He said, after wow. the movie's done, come in, I'll give you wow. one. And this is what That's the guy made so for cool. me. So when I wanted to cover this up, this I was like, just figured yeah. I'd try to match someone. Yeah, it looks yeah. good. I have to ask because. You're you're pretty tall, and, and usually when you meet like a an actor, or celebrity, like a Danny Trail, for example, it reminds mm-hmm. me because my late wife, who actually got me onto your movies, like Clerks and Mallrats at the time, was mm-hmm. on a flight with Danny Trejo next yeah. to him, yeah. and the big claim to fame was uh, he asked for a piece of gum when she pulled out the gum, and so that was great. <laughs> yeah, but nice. she couldn't believe how how short. And small, Danny really is in real life, but you're actually quite tall well, for thanks. an actor. So when you stand next to these guys, like, how does that jive? I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really, really, I don't crouch down. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't really. Uh... I don't know. I don't really pay attention to that. I yeah. think I think I'm too busy, like thinking about my yeah, dialogue yeah, for and sure. stuff like that. Um, so, but it's 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 funny. It's, it's, it's funny story. that I guess yeah. some people do think about it. They're like. Yeah. Mm. I remember you, but I get what you're saying. When you look at people on, on TV, television or yeah, the they screen, look like giants, especially <laughs> yeah. if they're doing like yes. they're playing characters like that, like these bad machete, like, and then uh, yes, right. and you're Danny's like, hey, a little guy. small. <laughs> Danny's great though. Da- Danny's such a lovely man. Um, sure, honestly, but um, you know who I met who is taller than you would think, or he looks as big as you would think. Who's another uh, such a nice guy? And I was sitting next to him on the plane. Is Jason Momoa? Oh, oh God. Yeah. he's a giant. <laughs> he gave me a hug and he gave me a hug and he's like this big and I was like, oh, Whoa, God. God. And I got butterflies. I wasn't gonna lie. I yeah, love awesome. him. Yeah, he is um, good. So. Aquaman man. Well, See, I like him from from Game of Thrones. Like, oh, yeah. like yeah, oh, yeah, he's like Buku yeah. <laughs> you know. That speech he gave in the yes. tent. Oh man. Yes. Thank you. Yes, it's my favorite. Fellow scene. Throner. I don't get yeah. a lot of throners. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can tell you're just uh, you're oh, having yeah. a moment here, Phil. And then he takes the Crap, like right, he gives the gold on it. Yes, oh, I, love it. I would you... have thought a Jersey guy would be Sopranos, yeah. would have been your show. You know, I, I, I never finished that show. I really? need to, yeah, I need to. I like it, I liked it, but again, it's like there's so much TV out there. Oh, like, yeah. I yes. find myself getting so, and I don't want to watch shows that I the shows that I like that I haven't finished. I don't want, I go back and watch other shows because I wind up, if I'm on a plane, right, and I, want, I don't want to watch something new because yeah. then all of a sudden the plane lands, you got to turn it off and you're like, yeah. oh my God, I was in the middle of that scene. <laughs> so I like go back and watch shows I've already watched three times, like Bones. I do a lot of know, that. Oh, Castle. Bones. Wow. Yeah, okay. Castle I've watched three times through. You know, I really like it. So. Nice. Okay. Five O. Yes, sir. Jason Mewes. No, we can't let you You're go. trying to kick me out of here. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I want to, no. you stay as long as you want. I'm just kidding. But I don't want to lose, I want 
wanted to ask you about a, a new Jay and Silent Bob movie. Yeah. When can we expect that? I've heard writing is underway. Yes, yes. Kevin's been writing one. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm hoping soon. I, I feel like, uh, you know, I don't want to wait too long. I don't want to wait to, like, where I can't. I want to try to still do my own stunts. Yeah. Oh. Not really, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely move, so my high <laughs> kick is, like, this high. Uh, no, but I, I'm hoping we do another one soon because I feel like, you know, it was... I want to keep like we have our comic book store, and I feel like I feel like if we do a new movie, it sort of revamps because there's the kids that don't know our movies. The same, right. just mm. the nice thing is there are people who the, there's the parents who pass it on to you their gotta watch kids this. Oh, yeah. in the yeah. next generation, next generation. But it's nice when we get come, if we come out with something new now, then hopefully it'll be easier to pass on a newer movie. To the next generation than trying to get them to watch a movie that's 30 years old, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. Do you believe that some of these streaming sites like Netflix and that, because, I mean, mm. sometimes a movie like yours from the past will come out as a new release on Netflix, but it brings in a whole new audience. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it does. I it's mean, been I'll, very I'll, good for that. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, and I'm hoping eventually we get Dogma, because I feel like that would be something actually new that people could watch on the streaming service because it hasn't been on any of that because we don't uh because harvey owns the rights still oh Mm. um so it's that's why you don't see the 20th anniversary Uh, edition it's not been on any prime video on netflix none so i really feel like that would be something nice because i know tons of people who know the movies are like dogma is my favorite so my point is that i hope eventually um Someone buys it and and puts it out on Netflix or whatever because be I cool. think that would be something yes. that would refresh the whole absolutely s- whole world the universe if you will. What about a re- what about a Mallrats too? Is that is there any way you can bring that back? That you know Kevin has a script for that already. Yes, and we would are love you to serious? Do it. Yeah, no, no, so I'm good. serious. And that was so supposed good. to be the next one. Um, that was something he was pushing towards because it's already written. He's done rewrites and he wants to do it. But again, there's always like, hey, A, can we get the money? Is yeah. someone going to give us $8 million, $9 million? Plus, is Universal who owns the rights to it? Are they going to allow us to do it? It's like, I didn't know all that. Even oh, all, even all 10 years all. in, yeah, like when you make a movie, like whoever's putting up the money owns the rights. And like, even if you want to do a second one, you have to get the rights from them. You know, even right. though it's Mall Rats too, it's not Mall Rats one. For some reason, you still have to. It's just a bummer. And there's a whole all these logistics that you have to. Anything on your bucket list that you still would like to uh, like, do? In, in for anything? Yeah, yeah. Creative wise, I mean, you've done the podcast. You're doing. I want to fight up Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're everybody else these I'm days. It seems like one page. You gotta I'm go through one kidding. of the Paul brothers yeah, first. Exactly. I think. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No way. I- <laughs> And it over and over and over and over and over and over tonight. Yeah. IG, yeah. Or no, oh, I almost said IGF. No, uh, Princess Auto Stadium. Okay, I just had somebody say that to me yesterday, and I had to say, no, I don't think that's what it's called anymore. Yeah, I know. Absolutely, it happens. But yes, go Bombers. Uh, they've got the Calgary Stampeders tonight looking to make it back-to-back wins, need to get on a roll. These are games you got to win with Calgary coming into town. Caleros is back. Yeah, I mean, we were off to a, a shaky start there and uh, a lot of injuries mm-hmm. this year early on in the season. But, hey, it's the Canadian Football League. It's the second half that things start rolling. You said that with the Alouettes. That's when they got rolling last year. Why bother? Like, the last couple of Grey Cup losses, I said this earlier. I can't claim that I said this. Somebody told me this. But why bother? Uh, I'm going to claim it for myself. But why bother playing this amazing football all year, being like 16-2, and two, and then you meet some... 8-10 and 10 team in the Grey Cup game, and they're red hot and they beat you. No, no. Get hot at the right time. Get healthy. That's what I think the Bombers are going to do this yeah. year. Yeah. No professional athletes walking in there going, hey, 4-14 four and is the goal <laughs> this year and a championship. But no, it gets happened. Very true. Yeah. It's going to be a good night. Listen, this is Winnipeg. We're going to be out in uh, support anyway because they've been drawing big crowds for the last four or five years. I mean, I think they announced 30,000 last Friday mm, for man. the game. Aww. And there's a lot of people, like 23,000 of them were hooked up around the rum hut, that whole corner. (laughs) I know for a fact, but (laughs) um, yeah. So we've got tickets for tonight? We do, right now. And this is a text to win. So a text to win, 762-555 on the Boston Pizza text line. Joe, 
Uh, pose your riddle, or no, it's not a riddle, your question. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> it's bit. The riddler. Riddle, the riddler. Give us a riddle. Yeah, okay, Joker. <laughs> <laughs> the average person apparently unlocks his or her smartphone this many times each day. What is that number without going over? Oh, that's got to be heavy. Well, we draw, let's say 830, okay? You've got till 830 to text at 762 So that... unlock your phone with face recognition or password, whatever you do. However you unlock your phone, the average person will do this how many times each day? Without going over on the number, just text us the number. And if we've got more than one correct entry, we'll randomize it. Randomize it up. You know what? The other day I, I was talking to my friend, and I, she goes, just, uh, just look on my phone. And I realized there was no password. It wasn't locked. I said, you don't oh, lock your phone? bad news. I, I, she's like, I don't have a reason to. I said, who, I didn't even know you could do that. Who, <laughs> in their right mind, has just a phone that's not password protected? So how many times would you say you unlock your phones? This oh, might God. give people some kind of guessing uh, help. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this. We're, uh, we're, I'm awake for about 18 to 19 hours a day. I unlock it how many times in an hour? So gotta do that math. I bet you I okay. un- I bet you I unlock it ten times in an hour. Or is that heavy? Okay. I can't say, but I ten think times it's a- in an hour and I'm awake for eighteen hours. Let's do that. That's seem- like I feel like you're talking to your doctor. I'm tra- Doc, I'm only <laughs> Doc, I'm only getting six hours of sleep and I'm on this damn phone. Okay. Even your doctor's trying to figure out the math. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He's Kirby, like, how kidding. about you? Uh, 180 uh, times. That'd be I would say. Throw in how many times you eat a day, how many hours of sleep you're getting. How, how much alcohol I consume? Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm gonna say for me, it's gotta be like around five hundred. <laughs> five hundred? Yeah, I would say that's for yeah me. and i might yeah. no judgment no i might be higher no, than 180 no. i don't know i, know. I also am one of those people that i'll fully admit i have uh anxiety <sighs> uh, like phone anxiety so i just like open it to see even if i don't have any notifications maybe my notification didn't oh, work. i do that maybe i gotta go we're look all, we're all addicted you know like, it's an are. addiction well i'm just gonna th- th- this wasn't to judge it was just to gauge for people to guess i'm okay, trying well, to I help feel judged or just kidding <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Uh, why did I ask? Why do I even ask? I'm going to tell you both right now so people can guess. Kirby is way, 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 way high on okay. the average. Yeah. And Phil was high. Oh, really? Oh, Phil was even high. Okay. By the way, pass protect those phones. Ask Tiger Woods how that went. Okay, that's well, how. Well, that that's idiot a... was texting wow. from his or own house. Or just don't be through. a shitty person. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> there's that. Also accurate. All right, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Philly Joe. Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Time to give away some bomber tickets. The question was asked. Stamps, bombers, tonight, 730 kickoff. We got some last second tickets. Joe, I called it a riddle. It was not a riddle, but uh, you had a question. Yeah, the, uh, the average person will unlock their smartphone how many times each day? Kirby said she's around 500. You said you're about 190. 180-ish. 180-ish. And the correct answer, believe it or not, is only 110 times. Only because of how your answers were. But 110 was the correct answer. We had about four, four people on the Boston Pizza text line. Put them in the randomizer, and boom. Who did we get, Kerbs? We got Christine Sward. Congratulations. You're going to the Bomber game tonight. Nice work, Christine. Also on the Boston Pizza text line, you mentioned it earlier, we try and usually get answers to most of the bone phone questions mm-hmm. or problemos. We yeah, we generally do. Like yeah. We solve a lot of issues on that bone phone. And it really came down to two options for the gentleman that called about his portable air conditioner going down. One option was getting Kirby to go over there and watch the same YouTube video that helped her fix hers. She can find Maybe the parts. Maybe fix this. Yeah, she, she can is. find the parts. Yeah, I can at least help you with that. Yeah. Once she phones the uh, supplier and uh, gets all that looked <laughs> after. Yeah, I, I was pretty proud of myself. She yeah, is an for option. sure. She is an option. But what's option. the other one? This might be the way to go. Enrico Air Conditioner Repair on Ness and Route 90. Enrico Air Conditioner Repair. 
And that mm-hmm. comes from our friend Kid Salami. Oh, always Enrico. delivers with a knockout. Boom. I wonder if that's Enrico Ciccone, former NHL enforcer, that's running that business. <laughs> you know what? I'm guessing probably <laughs> yeah. not. No. Sure, no, no, Kirby. He wasn't around that long in the NHL. He didn't make the big money. He's got a little side <laughs> hustle. That Enrico Ciccone. Imagine fixing if it's him. Fixing ACs yeah. now. Living, in, living hey. in Winnipeg, hey. fixing ACs from the ice yeah. to making you feel like ice. Oh, you've got his slogan well, right there. I do, I'll tell. <laughs> Tell you what, when she gave the slogan, she did a little like Punch. an umpire <laughs> striking <laughs> out somebody. <laughs> <laughs> really brought it home. For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 921 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.